And Abel Ferrara's Bad Lieutenant, a movie that's genuinely shocking in its depiction of the depravity of its central character, a drug-addicted, gambling-addicted, woman-abusing New York City detective who is on a one-man war to self-destruct. Next up, Russ and I review Bad Lieutenant. Welcome back to 4K Kings. My name is Matt. I am Russ. And welcome to your home of physical media, movie reviews, and so much more. Harvey Keitel crying. <laughs> the home of Harvey Keitel crying. Harvey Not- Keitel. <laughs> <laughs> Harvey Keitel. I don't know how I'm going to use any of this. Today we're here to talk and review this film, Bad Lieutenant, from Kino Lorber. We're here to review this film, talk about it at great length. Kino's doing the Lord's work by putting this out in 4K. This is the artwork I was always familiar with, uh, perusing video stores as a child. They always had their own NC-17 yeah. sticker right on the cover of Bad Lieutenant, which always just made it stand out more You're like, me. how do I get that? It's like, wow, I'm going to remember this movie. I'm going to check it out one day. Yeah. <laughs> that was the plan from the very beginning. I mean, Abel said, we are going to have an NC-17 film. And I went, wow. Well, we'll cover this release in a little bit, but first we're going to dive into this film, a movie that I just saw for the first time recently, so it's fresh in my mind. Russ, you've grown up on this film. It's a staple of your childhood. Well, my mom introduced it to me (laughs) when I was eight. We bonded. We bonded over it. Oh, yeah. You know, you heat up some popcorn, you hop on the couch with your family, you cuddle up. When Kytel cries, you cry. 1992 film directed by Abel Ferrara, and this is his eighth full length. I was like kind of blown away when I saw that. Driller Killer, Ms. 45, China Girl, King of New York, Cat Chaser, Fear City. His first film, Nine Lives of of a Wet Pussy, he directed. Yeah, it's porn. So I basically (laughs) named them all then. Yep. Am I a bad motherfucker or what, man? You know your shit. You know you're Abel Ferrara, that's for sure. You know, but we were, at that time in New York, we were creating what the, the ground rules were for independent films. And this movie was written by Ferrara and Zoe Lund, and I thought this was interesting. <coughs> Initially cast was Christopher Walken for this role. Up, up, up. And I guess Walken was in, bailed three weeks before shooting began. Like he was hired. Like he was getting ready to film this thing three weeks before he pulls out. I love Christopher Walken, but I'm so glad that happened. Kaitel is obviously the star of this show. There's a lot of side characters that kind of like weave their way through. They're all really, you know, interesting and add their little seasoning to this, this mixture. Oh yeah, dude. That's one thing. When you start digging more into his filmography, whoa, his casts are incredible. Extremely controversial at the time and maybe even today due to its depictions of drug use, violence, and depravity, he originally thought or wanted this to be a comedy. And it wasn't until Keitel came on board that things really took a turn. I want to talk about Harvey Keitel. Go ahead. Where is it? <laughs> I'll kick his ass. Where is it? And that's when you think the Christopher Walken element starts to make sense, because if I'm thinking this is a comedy and I got Christopher Walken cast and oh shit, he bails and here comes Keitel with his dick out, it's like, (laughs) it becomes just something completely different. There's a scene where Harvey Keitel, as the bad lieutenant, dances around, completely nude. I heard it was his idea. Is that, was that his idea? It wouldn't be my idea. I wasn't kidding when I said I feel like this is maybe my new like favorite movie. New favorite movie? Like one of my new favorite movies that I've seen in a, in a while. Dude, it took me by surprise. I'm not going to lie. It kind of took me by surprise. You're like, let's do a review on Bad Lieutenant. And I'm sitting here like, man, that came out about three <laughs> months ago. And shit, we put a clip out of it that got, what, 500 views? What are we doing? (laughs) Russ, we make videos for us. I make videos for me. Dude, I'm here for the Ferrara love. We had talked a lot about it being very controversial, and a lot of people in the comments were mentioning the same thing. Like, you know, there's a lot of moments that, you know, are kind of, like, icky Mm. and gross, and, like, he's a bad lieutenant, you know? I don't know what I was expecting, but nothing a single time made me, like, gasp. Mm. It just felt like a very violent at times you know tough to watch movie at times sure but it didn't like strike me as anything that i hadn't seen before in certain ways or in other things i think this speaks more to your viewing habits than it does to the casual <laughs> person disgusting i mean this is shit. an unflinching film don't you i i know we're we're seasoned is this pg um no 
For instance, right. when he's got the two teenage girls in the car, if a sane filmmaker was making this, no, you're right. It, I would, don't wanna, it wouldn't have gone me, on for about seven minutes. And let me back up. I don't want you to paint this as something that's like, oh, it's a big deal. I was expecting to be more shocked, but you're right. For the person watching this, I've seen a lot of things and we did a Serbian film review. Like we've been down in the deep depths. I don't think you were expecting it to be a cinematic. I don't think you were expecting it to be in the league of say Michael Mann. Cinematic, great, well, yes. well shot, well performed. And I completely agree, but I also think it works as a B movie as well. I think this is exploitation. And this is why I love him as a filmmaker. Ms. 45 in particular is a B movie, mm -hmm. but similar to this yo it's working like way on a level way above a b movie you know yeah. what i mean his whole filmography is like this that cool ass wheelhouse of grindhouse exploitation cinema but not not thoughtless not just to fill up the drive-in there's something here there is some depth to the depravity that's but, what is important to, to oh, note yeah, because yeah. it's not just like a piece of trash to offend. And that was another thing that I really liked, which I want to talk about later, but it's just kind of how the film concludes and how there is a lot more humanity to it than maybe you would expect yeah. there to be. <clears throat> but this is definitely my favorite Keitel performance of anything I've ever seen. Harvey Keitel doesn't have a chance of getting an Academy no, Award nomination. Right. And you cannot tell me that there are five better performances this year in the movies than the one he gets. Well, I, I've seen a lot of his stuff, and I appreciate him as an actor. Yeah. Even all of his modern stuff, too, and the stuff that he's still doing. But this is just such a raw, bearing-it-all performance that I just was just like sucked in by every moment. Everybody would agree with you whether they like the film or not. Just you can't take your eyes off him. No, like no, he's just can't. like... It's magnetic. I, I said this, I think we said this on a live stream once. You could think the movie is trash, but you're not going to walk out of it saying Harvey Keitel gave a bad performance. No, not at all. No, it was awesome. Super like open, bare, emotional. Like I said, he cries the whole damn time. <laughs> This is heavy shit to consume yourself in. We've seen acts like this committed in film by multiple actors, but you're not feeling the way you're feeling when you watch Bad Lieutenant. He stayed in character the whole time, which of course he Whoa. would, and that totally makes sense. Whoa. It's like he invested everything into this role we talked before about like, the heroin use like all that kind of stuff like he invested it all dude and i didn't even realize he's not even given a name like they never name him you cocksucker you fucking miserable fucking this film was your introduction to zoe lund then what else is she known for other than miss 45 also right uh that and heroin yeah because she's co-writer with mm -hmm. abel farrar is a lot of this stuff was written either fast or in the moment, which is, again, like you can kind of, if knowing that after the fact, it's like, that kind of makes sense with just how this feels when you watch it. Just mm -hmm. It feels like real life or it something. Does. Anything that partakes of human life in a truthful way is going to help me in some way or another. Right. And this, I feel it in my bones that this movie is showing us a side of reality that does exist New York, God damn, yeah, yeah. New York is always, in films like this, New York is just a character. 70s, right up until like the mid 90s, just New York or on film is. It just feels so damn real. And I and also don't want to, you know, not forget to mention that he's a bad lieutenant making bad decisions all across town. But the one thing that's kind of on his heels is that he's making bets that are consistently kind of getting out of control. And that is like an underlying tension that just with all the crazy shit that's going on in this movie there's that that just is always making you feel tense like there's just this like oh like what's gonna happen the whole time meanwhile he's being self-destructive in like 30 other ways there's one sort of case that he's trying to solve a sexual assault of a nun the resolution of the movie and of that case you really don't know it's very unpredictable like what's Harvey Keitel gonna do at any moment he probably didn't know because he was doing it live <laughs> you fucking scumbags the movie takes you in a lot of unexpected directions, including the ending, which I will say gave a sense more of the humanity than I was expecting. And then once I felt that, it, it kind of made me kind of go back and almost revisit my feelings of the rest of the movie in a way. And this is why it's brilliant. What it does is it, it sneaks up on you. Hey, maybe you have some empathy for the guy. 
<laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like up until at the end, it does. It makes you kind of rewatch the whole film and like almost have more sympathy for what he's going through. Rather, yeah. is up until that ending, it's like I kind of don't care what happens to this guy. Now I'm re-examining my relationship with this character that I just spent an hour and a half with. And even the part before he makes that final decision that he has to make when yeah. he's hallucinating and seeing Jesus, and mm. he's like giving that whole like monologue, which is like basically yes. one take, I'm sure. And he's like again just pouring everything out and the things he's saying and how he's like you know you again you're like kind of like understanding maybe more you're understanding you his torment yeah it's and kaitel like that's another element of this performance that is so brilliant normally when you see movies like this they're kind of unraveling more towards the self-destruction and the what's yeah. going to happen at the end of this gambling exactly two words paul schrader if politics is the business of the people then theater must be the soul of the people and enough with politics. Going back to kind of what we said in the beginning, as far as like how this movie feels and a lot of the things that go on, I might be a little cynical and jaded and cold hearted. This is definitely not an easy movie to digest unless you maybe are someone like me, but I'm not going to personally levy any flaws towards it. I maybe need to watch it a few more times to kind of like get more of a sense of it. But what I watched that very first time, I felt complete. I felt like mm. I just watched something insane and raw and just unlike any other performance and kind of maybe even unlike any other movie to some degree than I've sort of seen before. I mean, it's got a lot of elements of films that I like. It's got a lot of things that all kind of worked really well together. Like you said, the time period, the act the rawness of the story the conclusion was really great it's just really firing with age it has not lost its potency yeah no now you're talking about i've seen it more than once and i told yeah. you I, when i first saw it i was in my early 20s that feeling you described the first time you're gonna feel it again every time you watch it it's kaitel's performance yeah it's awesome Obviously, maybe not a surprise to anyone, but this film was not a success financially. It made two million on a one million budget. So, I mean, it, it did something. It's not bad. Hey, Again, you didn't have to market it. You couldn't. You're not allowed to market NC-17 no. films in America. And it did become, obviously, a cult hit then. It's still got that cult love now, and it's known as being maybe one of Kaitel and maybe one of Ferrara's best as well. Ferrara followed it up with Body Snatchers and Dangerous Game, a little bit more Kaitel action. And then Kaitel immediately followed this with Sister Act. How can you betray me like this? You are nothing! A sequel by Werner Herzog starring Nicolas Cage arrived in 2009 with Ferrara saying this, as far as remakes go, I wish these people die in hell. I hope they're all on the same streetcar and it blows up. Herzog's film was neither a remake nor a sequel to the movie. <laughs> I love that he gave that description. I hope they're all in the same streetcar and it blows up. That's a classic. Oh my God. Great yeah. director. Yeah, Go great director. So Bad Lieutenant, the physical media release of the year. Maybe not the year, but definitely one of my favorite uh, pickups of this year so far as I just finished gushing about this film. I'll gush about this movie. Kino Lorber, again, a nice little classy job with a nice little slip. A making of Bad Lieutenant documentary on here. Abel Ferrara is part of that making of documentary. So there's a, that's a nice little little mm -hmm. touch. You got a locations of Bad Lieutenant on here. And then an interview with cinematographer Ken Kelsch. The movie itself was, I mean, how could you be so bleak? This is a good title for Kino to put out. Yeah. And this is, a, I, I don't think any other label would have like taken a gamble. Like I said, this is perfect for Kino. I'm so happy they put this out. This has been released a bunch of times on DVD and Blu-ray. I've never owned it. Obviously, this is my first time picking this up and I couldn't be happier. It looks fantastic. There's a, there's a lot of really great reviews out there as well. But as far as I can tell, but it kind of reminded me in a way of like what Taxi Driver just made me feel like when I watched it. Again, just talking about New York and that earlier time. It's like just that time frame has now been sort of refreshed and modernized, but it just still feels like so, like the great is still there everything still feels grimy everything still feels real the way that harvey himself wanted it to be at times i believe that's very worthwhile to stand up for what you believe in 
again, different apartments and sceneries, a lot of different lightings. You're in churches, you're in apartments, you're in alleyways, you're out in the broad daylight, you're in a cafe, you're like in a police car. There's all kinds of different environments that they're in and they all just look so, so crisp and all the details there. I think everyone out there should support this and raise its stature in pop culture. Ooh. So for me and the people out there that have just seen Bad Lieutenant for the first time or are about to see it for the first time and have never seen any other Abel Ferrara films, where do we go after this? King of New York. King of New York, definitely right after this. Yeah. It's it's tamer, but I mean... It, That's it's, okay. I don't it, need it, all my movies to be like this. <laughs> I, I want to retract what I was saying earlier. I felt like earlier I was like, yes, this is the kind of movie I like and love and want to watch only. I'm afraid Miss 45 could go either way due to it being lower budget. So I'd say stick to... Fall in love with the filmmaker first with the familiarity, mm -hmm. then work your way backwards. So if you're starting... Okay. Yeah, and, and honestly, I would say... I would tell most people to start with King of New York, then go Bad Lieutenant. And where do you stop in his film? Filmography. Is there like a certain part where you're like, okay, he's kind of falling off after that? He seems like he's done a lot of movies. Uh, that's always debatable. I'm a fan of some of his films post Bad Lieutenant, but honestly, it's kind of Bad Lieutenant. He did have a minor comeback in the mid 2000s. He had a very well received French film, and it kind of uh, revitalized Gerard Depardieu's career for a, for a moment. Hmm. Honestly, start from his 45 and stop at Bad Lieutenant because then you'll hit. Fear City, you'll hit uh, China Girl, you'll hit, you know, all that. King of New York and Bad Lieutenant. That's his run. Well, this is the only one I've seen, so this is the only one I can recommend, and I would recommend this to anyone, this release itself, to ch at least check out this movie. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe. Set those notifications up. You just click a bell. Ring our bell. Ding. For more Harvey Crytel news, <laughs> you hear it. First.